We have so much fun with this. Everyone is doing life, but who knew life could be this funny? It's Doing Life with Maria and Chad. It's our podcast. And I want to share an update on today's podcast on the postcards I've been receiving that have lipstick on them and X and O and hugs and kisses. Uh, There are more postcards that have arrived. And I'll tell you all about that coming up. You are a liar. You are a fake. Maria and Chad present. Is this for real? Do you ever fake it? Get the fake out. That was a fake. I think I'm for real. All right, Maria. It's your chance. You got it right last time. I did. Can I get two in a row? I don't know. Uh, So (laughs) if you haven't heard this, uh, if you're new to the podcast, welcome. Thank you. Tell your friends. Tell everybody to subscribe and uh, make sure they turn on notifications so they can hear new podcasts as they're presented. Uh, Get the Fake Out works like this, okay? I'm going to give you four headlines today, three of which are absolutely real, came right from the news. One I made up. Maria's job. And if you're listening, you can play along is to figure out uh, which one is the fake headline a la Get the Fake Out. Number one headline for today. Uh, You can make milk chocolate healthier by adding peanut skins and coffee grounds. Uh. Uh Uh-huh. Number two. A restaurant chain is weighing diners to determine how much food they should eat. (laughs) Shut up. That's stupid. Uh, Number three, a zoo animal trainer was busted for shipping millions of dollars in drugs in the animal's fecal matter. (laughs) And my neighbor's dog is barking, if you can hear that. Uh, And number four, Burger King in Belgium has created face masks with food orders printed right on them. So those are your four headlines. Yep. And that's, that's, uh, well, if it's true, that's interesting, right? So you figure out which one is fake. I'm trying not to give away any clues today, Maria. Okay, so let's talk this out. I know I heard about the zoo animal trainer shipping drugs and poop. So I know that one's true. Uh I know it. You're sure. Um, It makes sense. Peanut skins and coffee grounds in, you know, like chocolate milk to make it healthier. Eh, maybe. Okay, so I think one in three are correct. Uh, Weighing diners. That's got to be something over in Europe. I think that's true as well. I don't think that Burger King has the face masks with the orders on them. I, I think that's um, people aren't going to pay for that. So, no. I think number four is the fake story. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Uh, I loved how <laughs> confident you were. You're, you're not right today. <laughs> Crap. Uh, so the fake headline is this one, uh, the one that you were so sure about. I made up the zoo trainer with the uh, the drugs in the fecal <gasps> matter. I mean, are may- you sure? Maybe that happened. Maybe that's why I thought of it. But I, as far as I know, that hasn't happened and definitely hasn't happened recently. If uh, I am going to do some research after this podcast because I think that's true. All right, if you're listening, let me know if that's a real story. But that was the <laughs> one I thought I made up. Uh, let's go through the other headlines here. <laughs> Uh, Burger King in Belgium has created face masks with food orders printed on them. Uh, This is a true headline. And you go to their social media site. They'll send it to you. And you know how it's tough to talk with a mask on? Right. So I think this is the idea. You can actually go in and and place your order without saying a word. So (laughs) It's so stupid. (laughs) I haven't gone through the process. I don't know if Burger King is charging for these masks or if it's like a promotional thing, but... You walk yeah. in there, your Whopper, fries, Coke, or whatever is on your mask, and they just read it, and they get your order. So, so you just, like, point at your face? I, I don't want know. This. It just seems so crazy. People are trying everything <laughs> these days. Um, yeah. The story about chocolate, I knew that would interest you. You're a chocolate girl, as is my wife. Yep. Uh, milk chocolate, adding peanut skins and coffee grounds. Uh, chemists actually created this and say that it's healthier, of course. Uh, And, of course, the chemists would say this. They're even saying some people like this new version more than traditional milk chocolate. My concern with that would be that the coffee grounds would be kind of gritty. And that would, like, texture-wise, I don't think I would like that. Yeah. 
I don't know. They're, they're saying it's not going to be available to the public for a while, but it is healthier, so something to look for if you're a chocolate lover. And the final story, which I think is hilarious, a restaurant chain is weighing diners to determine how much food they should eat. Uh, this is, you were right, uh, not Europe, but in China. And they're now apologizing for their decision to weigh the diners. Uh, they, des- they, they actually decided to try this <laughs> After there was a national campaign to prevent food waste, that was their the reason that they came up oh. with this. So, but could you imagine well, walking into a restaurant sense, and they're like, "Hop on the scale, oh, you're 500 pounds. You get a carrot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's your meal. <laughs> you're 80 pounds. Here you go. Well, you I get can a- see that. Ha- I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, well, I can see that happening in China, though. I, I mean, I, 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 it doesn't surprise me. Okay. Yeah. You know, speaking of uh, the size of people, I read this this morning and I had so much fun. There is a website and it's called Blue Bulb Projects. It's bluebulbprojects.com. And you can enter how tall you are. And there's other units as well. But I mean, you can enter how tall you are and it will tell you how you compare to other things in the world. Okay. So... As an example, I put in, I'm six foot, one inches tall. I'm six one. And it said, I'm about half as long as a Volkswagen Beetle. I am five times as tall as a bowling pin. (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) And three tenths as tall as a giraffe. Okay. (laughs) I mean, it was kind of fun. I mean, they had people in there. They had, you know, Vern Troyer. They had uh, Shaquille O'Neal, you know, stuff like that. But I thought that the bowling pin and the giraffe were kind of funny. You but, know, that, uh, it's kind of fun. That is a, a random fact that I think we've talked about on our radio show and also on our podcast here. If I stand up straight, you and I are the exact same height. I have a right. huge slouching problem. I always like, you know, you can see it on the, if you're watching our show on YouTube. But yeah, we're both six well, one. I, yeah, and what's really funny is my husband, and again, if you ask him, he'll say he's six foot. He's not. He's more like five, ten and a half, five eleven, something like that. But he is all upper torso, and I'm all legs. Yeah. So if we're sitting down next to each other, he's actually taller than I am. Isn't huh. that weird? That is. That well, <laughs> that's probably been good. Your husband was a big uh, surfer, swimmer guy, having the long torso. Yeah. It's probably been been good for him. And by the way, I have not added him to the list of suspects. Uh, we've talked about this on uh, oh. other podcasts. With the, uh, the postcards that I've been receiving, I yes. have not one, but two more, which brings <gasps> the total up to four now uh, uh, postcards. And um, oh my gosh. if you're watching on YouTube right now, hold them up. There's one and there's two. And they both come with their signature XOXO on the back and the uh, uh, lipstick. There's two different, uh, looks like different lipsticks and... One's more of a a schmooch, you know, and one's Uh like a wider. So I don't know if it's the same person, but they are all from the same artist. Uh, Let me read you what they say. Uh, (laughs) One of them says, sorry, I farted. How do we move on from this? And the other one says, (laughs) this is kind of funny and creepy. Says, sorry, I used your toothbrush. It was my awkward way of saying I like being close to you. Hold it okay, there. that has to be your wife. I know, it's weird. Or right? your daughter, because she's a farter. They but... still insist it's not them. Do you think I what? ever get an answer as to who this person is? I hope so, but I'm telling you, it's got to be your wife. It's got to be. I did follow I up she's... on your hunch that it was our friends Kirk and Crystal, and I texted Kirk yeah. like a week ago, and he said... Uh, that you were right. If it was him, he would never tell me. So if it is them, <laughs> I'll never figure out. But if you're if you're watching this podcast and you're my secret admirer, it's about time to come out and tell us about you know who you are, why you're doing this, it's tormenting me. I'm I'm. This is what I think. Okay. I think that it's your wife, and she ordered these cards, and you get like a whole box of them, you know, and uh-huh. then she randomly sends them out. So oh, what's the postmark? Where's the postmark from? Uh, let's see. This one says Phoenix. See? And the other one's like, you can't see it. The stamper doesn't really show. It is Arizona. I don't know if it's Mesa. I'm not sure. But same pin, 
similar lips but different uh, different display on it. I don't know. Okay, so this is your this is your job. Okay. Your wife has an office, right? Same pen. Yeah. Go through her pens and see if you can't figure out which pen she used. Mm-hmm. I like it. Uh-huh. Inspector Clouseau. All right. But you have well, to do it when she's not home. You have to do it when she's not home. <laughs> okay. I'll do that. <laughs> oh, um, something else I read this morning, and I know, I know, I know you would be totally in on this. Um, last podcast or a couple podcasts ago, you talked about would you burn a live butterfly for a thousand dollars? And we both agreed, yes, we would and, like a thousand dollars. Well, here's another thing for a thousand bucks. Would you hop in an RV and go camping at a national park for three days without internet? Oh, in, in a minute. That's the that's right? the greatest thing. Well, you know, sometimes you don't have a choice when you get into these national parks because they don't have cell towers and stuff. Yeah, I would. Right. Sign me up. Can I go today? Well, what's what's interesting is there's this internet company, and I didn't write down the name of the company, but anyway, the internet company says they'll pay you a thousand dollars to go for two days without internet. And I also think it means if you read the fine print, you can't have phone at all. So that means no pictures. Okay. And that was the hard one for me because I love to take pictures. So no pictures to put on Instagram or your Facebook or no, hey, the pines are, pine trees are great on Twitter, you know, whatever it is. So you're completely free of all that stuff, but you still get $1,000 and they reimburse you for food, which I thought was amazing. I totally signed up. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right up my alley. I got to do that too. Oh my gosh. We can go together. Yeah, I'll try to find, uh, I'll try to find the link. And um, we'll we'll put it up or I'll at least give it to you, Chad, or put it up on our Facebook page or something. Oh. And it was like the national park of your choosing. And I wanted to remind you, you got to get that picture on Facebook of Olive uh, with the cape on. Did you put that up yet on Facebook? Well, yeah, it's up there. Um, oh, okay. It's in the comments. Okay. So there's the picture of Olive. It's on the uh, Maria and Chad Facebook page. There's a picture of Olive, you know, jumping into the pool. And then uh, Squeak Abe Manny did the Photoshop of it. So it's in the comments. All right. Check that out on our social media. Uh, before we get to our final question today, I uh, have a thing that's happening today um, that I'm a little nervous about. Well, I'm actually a lot nervous about. Um, I go to the dentist twice a year to get cleanings and make sure that everything is fine, right? So six months ago, we were in the start of quarantine and I... Got a call going, hey, your appointment's tomorrow, and I, I canceled, you know, so I didn't do right. it then. Uh, today, this afternoon, I have, six months later, the next appointment, and I am going to the dentist today. And it, let me tell you, one of my neighbors, uh, her name is Jenny, she uh, is a dental hygienist. So I talked to her, mm-hmm. I'm not going to her office, but I asked her how it works for her, and she said that they wear two masks, like double layer masks, which is tough right. for her because she can't breathe. I mean, the gloves and all that stuff. So I'm hoping that my dentist has those so per- same precautions in place because they're open. You know, they must be. But I'm going in for like a standard cleaning. Have you done any of this stuff since the pandemic started? I thought you were going to say you were worried because you haven't been to the dentist in a year. <laughs> no, well, that could be. I'm, this, I'll find out. You know, I, th- I think I'm OK, but. You know, we pay the insurance for it. We might as well go. And I don't know. It just makes me a little, I'm kind of weirded out about it. You know, it's funny that you actually bring that up because my husband just went to the dentist like two, three days ago. And he was worried about the same thing. And I was thinking, gosh, the dentist office is so careful anyway. I mean, they have the masks and the face shields and they wear gloves anyway. And all the utensils are you know, sanitized, I think the dentist office is probably one of the safest places out there. Okay. Um, He went and said it was perfectly fine, but there was a new hygienist that was really rough. He goes, you know, she was fast, but she was rough. And he came home just, just in pain because she just really dug into his gums and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But as far as safety, I don't think you have anything to worry about. It's um I'll I'll update you uh, on our next podcast, but yeah, it's just kind of a kind of a weird thing that that needs to be done in these times. But yeah, I think they're they'll probably be pretty 
pretty safe. Um, the final question for today. Oh, sorry. Well, I was just going to say, I haven't been to the dentist in forever. No. I probably need to do that. Gosh darn it. Now you're making me feel guilty. I'm afraid well, of the dentist. <laughs> I, I, it's kind of good. I mean, they are uh, very uh, regimented. They're like, okay, your six months is up. We can, I mean, if as long as it's one day over six months, the insurance covers it. So they're like, they got to get you in there to get all their appointments and make oh. their money. So they, they kind of make my appointment for me. Uh, the final question for today, uh, the reason I picked this one is because when we're recording this on what is National Dog Day... Um, your Yay! dog is Olive and my dog is named Juno. And the final question is, is there a special way that you bond with your pet? Mm, do you want to go first? I Yeah, I can tell you one thing that I've done with our last dog, Sookie, and then with Juno. Um, I cannot get ice out of the refrigerator without our dogs coming. I mean, it's all my own fault because I started this puppy on the same thing. So as soon as I, I mean, the dog could be at the other end of the house. And if I get ice, she thinks it's the greatest treat, which is great in the desert to give them ice, you know? Right. Um, But yeah, I would say that's kind of like my thing. And it drives my wife crazy because sometimes she'll miss an ice cube and it'll melt on the floor and, you know, there'll be a spot on the floor and, you know, just horrible, horrible things. (laughs) Uh, Can I eat? Tell two things. Am I allowed to do sure. that? Sure. <laughs> yeah, no rules. <laughs> uh, number one, I think how I bond with Olive is she likes to swim, but she won't swim unless there's a treat involved. Yeah. And so um, I think I give her exercise by, you know, making her jump in the pool and swim around. And then I give her treats. And my husband gets mad because then the treat crumbs fall into the pool and it messes up the pool. And, you know, he's pretty anal about all that stuff. So I think swimming with the dog and the treats is one. You know, flashback, oh my God, how many years? 40 years when I lived in Florida. Believe it or not, we had a pet alligator. Yeah. And uh, my dad, uh, for those of you familiar with Florida, um, ran a chain of hotels and included in that was Homosassa Springs, the the resort and the attractions, which is where you can go and feed the alligators and, you know, whatever. So anyway, the alligator keeper gave me a little alligator and he was about a foot long and we had him at the house and he told us how to take care of him and everything. And I used to bond with the, if you can bond with an alligator, I guess. I used to swim with the alligator in our swimming pool. (laughs) <laughs> and I would get in the pool and he would get in there and just swim around. And honest to God, it was so much fun. And that stopped when my mom at that time used to skinny dip at night. And my brothers and I took the alligator while my mom, while my mom was skinny dipping and put it in the pool and she didn't know. And so she's swimming around and the alligator is kind of following her. And she's like, what the hell is going on? So we weren't allowed to do that anymore. And for all the animal lovers out there, when the alligator got bigger, we took it back to the attractions and it's there safe and sound. We weren't abusing it. We didn't let it go in the sewer or anything like that. But uh, apparently I like to bond with my animals in the pool, I guess is the moral of the story. (laughs) And I think that maybe could be like your mom's memoirs, like skinny dipping with alligators. I'd read that book. Like, what? How did that happen? How's that come together? That's crazy. Wow. That is a great name for a memoir. I love it. So the final question again, uh, we do this for us to tell stories, but also for you to share your story uh, on National Dog Day or whenever you're listening to this podcast. You can uh, direct message us on Instagram. You can message us on Facebook. uh, Just search for Doing Life with Maria and Chad or on Instagram, it's at Maria and Chad. Uh, The question, is there a special way that you bond with your pet? Let us know and we'll update um, some of your responses on the next podcast. And I think everybody has an answer to that. I know you. Yeah. Can. Yeah. And I didn't want to make it just dogs because people are like, I only have a cat. Well, tell us about your cat. I don't care. Uh, or your guinea pig. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> places where our podcast is available iHeartRadio, the iHeartRadio app, Spotify, Google Podcasts, uh, Stitcher, TuneIn, Pandora, Podbean, and uh, YouTube. And actually, let's do this. If um, we can post up uh, some photos of our dogs right now on oh, sure. the YouTube channel. 
So when people watch the YouTube, uh, they can see pictures of Juno and pictures of Olive uh, and maybe your mom's nipple being bought, bit by an alligator, whatever you got, whatever <laughs> pictures there are. <laughs> her uh, nipples were by her belt by that time. <laughs> Life happens. Uh, on YouTube, you can find us. Search for Doing Life with Maria and Chad to see all these pictures and watch our podcast. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. And most of all, thanks for listening. Mwah. Thanks again for listening to Doing Life with Maria and Chad. Follow us on Instagram at Maria and Chad. You can now listen to every episode on the iHeartRadio app, Spotify, Google Podcasts, TuneIn, Pandora, and of course, you can watch on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single episode.